Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Radiallahu Anhu. He has many titles referred to as Sultan Al Awliya, the leader of the Awliya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the awliya of Allah are a special class or category of believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in this Quran. Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. The awliya of Allah the special friends of Allah. There is no grief for them. There is no fear of them or for them. With respect to their maqam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises great blessings for certain groups of believers and he mentions this the prophet alayhi salatu salam for example he says sab'atun yudhilluhumu allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluh there are seven categories of believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them to be examples for us. And the leader of the awliya is Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Radiallahu Anhu. Sultan Al Awliya. Al Ghawsul Adam. The one from whom help is sought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him even in his lineage. On his father's side, he descends from Sayyidina Al Hassan. Radiallahu anhu alayhi salam. From Ahlul Bayt. And from his mother's side, Umul Khayr, he descends from Sayyidina Al Imam Hussein. Radiallahu anhu alayhi salam. So it's Hassani Husseini. Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani radiallahu anhu. And countless millions of believers were influenced by him and continue to be influenced by him. So many people he brought back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates in their status and maqam are able to influence people in this way an evil person cannot influence someone to believe in Allah a bad person would not be able to get someone and many people to take shahada to become a believer to become a Muslim to accept Islam good people do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the nur in their heart so then then they can become this light that people are guided with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran that there are those whom He raises up and He grants them a nur that they walk with upon this earth and others are guided to the light of Allah through this nur. Through this nur, subhanallah. And you see this sometimes. There are people, because of their closeness to Allah, others are affected by them. And others become closer to Allah by interaction with those people, by relationship with those people. Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, radiallahu anhu, is the most outstanding example of this. 
of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentions ten nasiha advises for those seeking Allah, salik at tariq, the seekers on this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentions in one of his great books, Futuhul Ghaib. Ten advises, nasiha, for the one who wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to share them with you today. The first thing he said, do not swear by Allah, whether truthfully or falsely, deliberately or absent-mindedly. This is not something we see or, or witness too much here in our society. But you go to Muslim countries, like in the Middle East and so on, you, see, you notice it all the time. Wallah, wallah, wallah. Anything. And what happens, it becomes so much part of the, the vocabulary, the common, frequent vocabulary of people that they use it some many times without reason and out of its context and sometimes lying also to get things up done i've witnessed this some someone comes to you and they want you to do something for them say wallah by allah my mother is very ill you have to do this for me my father is very ill Sometimes they say someone, is, someone dies and the next week they forget that they told you that. And they say the same person die again. Wallah, by Allah. So when they say that, you have no option. They are swearing by Allah, so you have to give them what they want. People use this conveniently. Sometimes. The Imam mentioned something very important. He says, keep away from this. Keep away from this. Don't do this. Don't take an oath by Allah. It is serious. It is serious. This is the first advice he shares. He says, if you exercise this self-control over your tongue, it will bring you to the point where Allah will grant you a light, a nur, for the things you say, for the things you say. That your words now become meaningful, become weighty. Imam Shadali, Qutb al -Aqtab, he said something interesting. The words that come from you, the words that you speak, they are covered, they are cloaked in a cover of ikhlas, of sincerity that you speak with. And that is the effect it has on people. If your words are sincere, touches the heart, touches the heart. If not, just go to the one ear and out the other doesn't enter the heart. The words that you speak, it's covered with ikhlas, covered in that cloak. What is the nature of that ikhlas? What is the strength of that ikhlas? What is the purity of that ikhlas that you're speaking with? And so words then, with this total, complete, sincere ikhlas for Allah, affects the heart of people. So he says, be mindful. Refrain your tongue from swearing. He says, secondly, you, this person who wants to travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and arrives at the destination in a good state. You see, all of us are traveling on the journey to Allah. We mentioned this on Sunday of this week. We had the sacred knowledge seminar, a matter of life and death. We talked about it all day. Different life and death, the journey of the soul. We all traveling to Allah and the final destination, the day of judgment. When we stand up in front of Allah, 
We are on this journey. But the, the consideration for us is what will be our state when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How will we stand up in front of Allah? So everyone is traveling, including the kafir. But the kafir, when he arrives in front of Allah, what he has? No good deeds. No good deeds. What is our state when we return to Allah? Salika tariq. He addresses them. Secondly, avoid lying. Kathab. Avoid lying. Don't lie. No matter whether it is earnest, like deliberately, or in jest, like jokingly. Some people do that. And if you ask them, if you confront them, say, I'm just joking. It's like an excuse to do what they want to do. People, sometimes they do that. They tell you, so they want to tell you something hurtful and they make a joke of it. And if you were to confront them, they say, oh, I'm just joking. And the Prophet Ali, his son, was concerned about that. Be mindful of your jokes. You're responsible for them as well. You're responsible for them as well. So he says, avoid lying, whether earnest, in earnest, meaning seriously, deliberately, or in jest, jokingly. When you prevent yourself from doing it, he says, you get a purity of mind. That's the effect on you, purity of mind. SubhanAllah, look at the, look at the effect. The Imam is saying, Sayyidi Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Avoid lying, do that. The hadith the Prophet ﷺ says, Beware, iyakum al kadhib. Beware of lying. Because if you lie, then you would, it would become habitual for you. Become habitual, you do it all the time. Hatta yuktabu indallahi kadhaban. Then you'll be recorded with Allah as a liar. That's how you return to Allah on the day of judgment. He says, Be mindful about that. Don't do that. Thirdly, avoid hurting someone or something. And one of the things you mentioned, avoid cursing people. Avoid doing this. She says, even if you're angry with them, even if they are your enemy, even if it's your enemy, avoid doing it. And the Prophet Ali would tell his sahabas, don't do this. Especially with the unbelievers, the non-Muslims. You, you don't curse their gods because they may retaliate and they curse your God. Curse your prophet. Curse your religion. We don't want that. So even with someone that may be your enemy, you have some problems, conflicts with, you don't do that. Avoid cursing people, avoid hurting people, or, or some, some thing as well. The Imam is mentioning, not only people, but a thing. Avoid doing that. Then he says, it helps you on your journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these things that he's mentioning, they're like hurdles, obstacles on the journey. If you have these obstacles, it blocks your way. It blocks your way. And there's something called spiritual block. Spiritual block that people would experience in their lives. For example, if your parents are displeased with you, that's a tremendous block for you in your life. Many things go wrong for you in your life if your parents are displeased with you. It causes a block and you would find see that things are difficult for you in your life. But if parents are pleased with you, it opens the way on this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. Many things in your life become easy for you. Be mindful of this spiritual block. So he says avoid cursing people or avoid hurting someone or something. 
He says as well, avoid invoking evil on someone. Keep your heart pure from this. Like someone may, may do something wrong to you. They may hurt you. They may offend you. But he says, even so, avoid wishing evil on them. I wish Allah will kill you. I wish Allah will cause you to get in an accident and your feet is cut off or something like that. Keep away from that. He says, it develops within you rahmah. Like when you control yourself in this matter, when you refrain from invoking evil on others, it causes you to develop rahmah inside of you, subhanallah. Mercy. You become more merciful. Become more merciful. You never know how things can happen. As one of our students, he sent me an email this week. He's very conscientious of his journey to Allah. Subhanallah. Outstanding person. He's actually an imam in one of the masjids in Denver, Colorado. Contacted me, he heard about me, and he wanted me to be his sheikh. So he, we would let him do spiritual training, different dhikr and so on. So I gave him a special salawat to recite two weeks ago. This week, earlier this week, he contacted me, he says that he's been reciting this special salawat or durood and he can't control himself. He's crying. He's weeping. He feels this softness of heart that he has never felt in his life. The, and I told him it's the effect of the salawat. When you have love for the Prophet wasalam, it affects you in amazing ways. In amazing ways. I told him the tears you shed for Allah, it's a purification for your soul. Just as how wudu purify our body, our physical body, the tears of the eyes purify your soul, takes you closer to Allah. Be mindful of what we do. Every Every good deed that you do to obey Allah, it has an effect on you and it has an effect on creation around you. Really. The words of dhikr you recite, it has an effect on the, the place that you're reciting it in. The ground you're sitting upon reciting dhikr of Allah, reciting Quran, reciting the road is take far. Those words of dhikr, of remembrance, it, they have an effect on the place. The, that piece of earth that you do that, the walls that surround you, they bear witness for you in the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Your words of dhikr cause the fishes in the ocean to seek forgiveness for you. Prophet Allah mentioned this. Your, your worship of Allah has an effect on the creation of Allah. Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal Sayyidina Sa'ad Sayyidina Sa'ad when he passed away the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said that the arsh of Allah, the throne of Allah, was shaking, was trembling on the news of the death of Sayyidina Sa'ad. Sayyidina Sa'ad, because of his worship of Allah. SubhanAllah. For you, Remember this. These are great words of advice from Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Remember them. 
so you can get closer to Allah. Be mindful of your behavior, your conduct. Be mindful of what you say and what you do. And the more you strive to please Allah, the more that noor becomes brighter for you. The more that noor, the light from Allah that He has placed in your heart, when He guided you to Iman, that light becomes brighter and brighter. Because of your worship of Allah, because of your striving for Allah, don't disobey Allah. Strive to get closer to Allah. This is a message of Sayyidi Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, radiAllahu anhu. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us to love the awliya of Allah and to get closer to them. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala put in our, in our hearts love for him and law for his beloved rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam amin amin amin